With almost everything in life, I'm a believer that mistakes are a good thing. They're a chance for you to look hard at what you're doing and to learn and grow from there. And I find this to be especially true when it comes to photography. I made mistakes for years and I still do every single time I go out shooting, but as a result, it forces me to look closer at both my photos and my process of shooting, either by figuring it out on my own or online through places like YouTube or Google. But down through the years, there were also some other less tangible mistakes that I made a lot ones that were a little bit harder to notice and a little bit harder to move on from. So in this video, rather than looking at technical mistakes, things like camera settings, ISO, shutter speed, I'm gonna talk about those mistakes that are just that little bit less obvious. The mistakes that I made that cost me just a little bit more in things like time, energy, and attention. Because as I now realize, those things are much more valuable in the long run. And hopefully by sharing my experiences, I might just be able to save some of you a little bit of time and energy and attention as well. So let's get straight into it then. The first and by far biggest mistake that I made when I first started taking photos was not going out to shoot enough. As I said multiple times in my last video, I'm a big believer that the most important element of learning photography is practice. I think a lot of the time in the photography community, the tendency is to slightly oversell the artistic side of it and to undersell the practical side of learning. Even though I'm sure there are plenty of other videos on YouTube making this exact point. Actually, I know there is because I watched them all when I was a beginner photographer, but I didn't listen. But I'm just gonna add one more voice to that because I really do think that it's a very important thing to do as a beginner to just get out and practice as much as you possibly can. I learned myself by not doing it that you can watch tutorials until the cows come home, but by not actually going out to shoot, it's gonna take you much, much longer to learn all of the technical things, the composition things, shutter speeds, everything. Anything that you wanna learn, by actually going out and practicing it and probably messing it up a few times, you're gonna learn it much, much faster. Now, I know that makes it a little bit of a cliche to have this as my first point, but I, I, I do feel like photographers have like an extra tendency to be a bit lazier when it comes to actually practicing what we do. I think a lot of that comes down to like conditions. We have this habit of waiting until the conditions are perfect. I mean, I know I used to do it, I still do a lot. Like it's, it's really easy to go out and shoot when the sunset is amazing or you have the perfect light. But what I've found through the years is shooting consistently no matter what the conditions are, the light is much more beneficial in the long run. And I personally kind of discovered this by accident, or at least not by thinking about it too much when I got a job as a content creator for a small company. Basically, my job was to provide a certain amount of content every month. So I had to go out and shoot almost every single day, no matter what the conditions were, no matter what the light was. I had to get out there and try and get as much photos or videos as I could. There were some great days where the conditions were perfect and I got some absolute bangers, but there were also some really crappy days where I shot absolute crap. And to be honest, the most common result was just I took a lot of average photographs. But one thing that did happen is my photography improved a lot, like probably more than any period since the very first day I picked up a camera. I found that by having to find photographs no matter what, I more often had to look for solutions to problems that came up because the conditions weren't perfect. And I think by kind of forcing yourself to do that more often, you're gonna learn faster as a photographer. The second mistake that I made a lot in my early years of taking photos ties in a little bit with my first point, and that is not putting yourself in the right situations to take great photos, or maybe more specifically, not doing the little bit of extra work to be in the right place to get a good photo. You see, as a beginner, I think there can sometimes be too much emphasis put on certain elements of photography, like the technical elements, for example, or more so we can get sucked into things like editing or camera settings or absolute worst of all, camera gear. Don't worry, I'll come to that point later. And we don't realize, or sometimes we forget that the best thing we can do or the most important thing we can do is just to put ourselves in better situations to take great photos. So that's a little bit vague, but what do I mean by this specifically? I mean things like getting up at 4 a.m. to shoot an early summer sunrise. I mean going out for some photos in a late blue hour after work when you're tired and you don't have much time. I mean going out in freezing cold winter days or out in the rain. 
Sometimes these extra elements can be the things that really make our photos stand out. Or it can mean hiking or driving or taking the train for hours to actually put yourself in a more interesting place to get better photos. And I don't necessarily mean a tourist attraction by that either. It can also be in your locality. It just might take a little bit of extra work to find that interesting thing to capture. It took me quite a while to realize that as a beginner, to put in that little bit of extra work. And sometimes those days can be absolute disasters and you'll come home with absolute terrible photos. But more often than not, you'll learn something from that too. I don't just mean physical work by this here either. It can also mean things like putting yourself out there to people. Maybe there's a local business that you're interested in or some local person that has some cool hobby, for example, that you want to shoot. This has helped me a lot when it came to finding interesting stories to tell. By simply putting yourself out there and just asking if people want photographs or if they're willing to have their story told, that can lead to some really amazing results. Some of my own favorite photos down through the years have really come from when I've just been surrounded by people doing interesting things. And I think that that sometimes gets overlooked. As you can see today, really all I'm using is this camera and this lens. Now let's get to the big one that I mentioned earlier. Another mistake that too many of us make as beginner photographers is spending way too much money on camera gear. Not only that, but also not spending enough money on other important things. Now I know that this is one of the most overplayed talking points on YouTube, but I really do believe that it's a very important one. It's actually funny because I remember as a beginner photographer, I was really frustrated about this whole gear doesn't matter thing because I would see way too many photographers I follow online saying things like gear doesn't matter but then like three videos down the road talking about the next latest and great camera model that's going out and like just constantly buying new cameras and for me as like a normal person starting out with photography this just is not realistic but I've since found that the world of photography and photography YouTube in particular is just totally focused around gear and to me I think the reality is that for beginners most of that stuff just really is not that important and don't get me wrong I'm not saying that gear isn't important as more advanced experienced professional photographers gear is exceptionally important you need to be able to rely on it all the time but as beginners or hobbyists that are just starting off you really don't need all that much and i wish that personally i spent much less time worried about all of that instead my advice would be to spend your time and money on experiences that you can shoot Personally, for me, this was travel, but it doesn't have to be that. It can be anything. At one point a few years ago, I spent all of my money on travel and it completely opened up the world of photography to me. So basically, I decided to spend a long time saving money until I had enough where I had a choice. Either spend all of my money on camera gear and find things to take photos of at home, or else spend a little bit of that money on camera gear and the rest of it on travel. I chose the latter and although I didn't really realize it at the time, that was probably the single best thing that I've ever done for my photography. I learned so much and my photographs got so much better because they were driven from that passion and amazing experience that I was having. So what I'm trying to say is this, that as a beginner, you don't need to spend all of your money on camera gear. Sure, you need a little bit of camera gear, but instead, I think it's far better to spend your money on experiences that will drive your passion and hunger for photography. It doesn't have to be travel. For me, it was, but it can be absolutely anything. It can be swimming lessons, so you can finally start taking photographs in the ocean. Or it can be a car, so it's easier for you to road trip up and down the country to get the photographs of places that you've always been interested in. Whatever it is, just try to look beyond the camera gear for something a little bit more powerful. The fourth mistake is probably the simplest one to tell and the most difficult one to do. Try to stop paying attention to social media. I know it's addictive and I know that nobody really has the right to lecture anybody on their social media habits. I get that, I'm as guilty as anybody, I can promise you that. But it's not just the spending time on social media that I'm talking about, it's also the paying attention to it as well. When I first started photography, it would have been around the time when Instagram was really starting to break out. And I've kind of had this weird side-by-side -side journey with the app ever since. So as you can imagine, I'm as guilty as anybody for following social media trends. I've done them all throughout the years. But honestly, none of them ever brought me as much joy in photography as when I started to focus more on the stories around me and the stories that I wanted to tell. Rather than chasing what you think will do well online, I think a much better approach is to find the things that interest you and find ways to tell stories about that. And tell these stories too, as stories. Don't try to squeeze them into TikToks or 16 by 9 form 
or whatever those platforms want you to do. You can figure all of that out later. Focus on the story first. Now, of course, I'm not gonna be just another photographer on YouTube to say that those are bad things. They're not. If you like making them, keep doing that stuff. I like making that stuff too sometimes. I make reels and TikToks and YouTube shorts lately, and it's even part of my day job that I do every single day. But where I think the problem for many beginners is it's feeling that you have to take photos like that or you have to make content like that. Focusing too much on the format and not enough on the story. And I think this is especially true as a pitfall of photographers today. We're so used to seeing trend after trend and some of that content is fun. I'm not looking down on it and I'm pretty sure a lot of that is maybe a better way to grow a following online. That's not really what I'm talking about. I think that when it comes to learning photography and getting the most out of what can be a really satisfying hobby or maybe even a profession, my advice would be to focus on the story first, always. I think that all four of those mistakes tie into one final thing that I think is important to remember, and that's to enjoy the journey. I think that it's really important to remember that for most of us, we started photography because we really enjoy it. Some of us, get better some of us go on to make money and become professionals some of us stay as hobbyists but a lot of us get caught up in taking better and better photographs and we lose ourselves a little bit and we forget to actually enjoy it and part of that enjoyment is unfortunately making mistakes learning and getting better and better it's part of the process and we all need to do it i just hope that with this video i was able to at least make some of you aware of some of the trickier mistakes that i made so that you can get over those in your own time as well but do let me know in the comments let me know if any of these are mistakes that you struggle with as well or if you have any other specific mistakes of your own and if you're interested in learning a little bit more about photography check out my previous video that i made about composition for beginners or any of the other past videos that I've made on this channel. Thanks again for watching, and I'll be back with another one really soon.